All right, let's bring it back to markets. We have 30 minutes left of trade on Wall Street, closing out what could be a record day for the Dow, the index on track to surpass its February all-time high. It's closing high. 29,551 is the magic number there to watch. It's also likely to be one of the biggest daily point gains in history as well. Look at that, more than 1,230 points. Stocks were already primed to rise because we now have a greater degree of certainty around the U.S. election and the impending Joe Biden presidency is clear. Then Pfizer leapt to the front of the race to find a coronavirus vaccine. The company says early data shows its vaccine is more than 90 percent effective. Dr. Saad Omar is the director of the Yale Institute for Global Health, and he joins us now from New Haven, Connecticut. Great to have you with us, Dr. Omar. Struggling not to be overenthusiastic here, but uh, your perspective is definitely needed. What do you make of today's announcement? So my mood is cautious optimism. Uh, it's certainly a good news. It's a very good news, but we need uh, a little bit more data uh, to be certain of this finding, and but also uh, the subsequent stages of uh, this trial and other uh, set of evidence base. I mean, what we have to be clear, and we were just talking to Dr. Sanjay Gupta about this earlier on in the show. He said 44,000 people were in this trial. 93 people have caught COVID, and 90 percent of those came from the placebo pool. Is the risk here, as we see more people catch COVID, that that efficacy rate of 90 percent comes down? Not necessarily. So that's the beauty of randomized trials. Uh, it, the efficacy can change due to prevention behavior and other extraneous factors, uh, but 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 that's the value of doing uh, these randomized trials that we can have confidence in the overall estimates once the final results are out. I'll caution that while these results are good uh, and while the fact uh, while they point to a, a reasonable efficacy, this may not be the final number. But, but this magnitude of impact rarely goes away on, on the final analysis. So the chances are that a good, solid vaccine will be available. It may not be 90 percent efficacious, but this is a good number. OK, what's the next things that we need to know, whether it's, uh, I guess, the impact on severe cases of the disease, but also, I guess, the level of immunity and how long that immunity lasts? Uh, absolutely. So the first thing that is, coming down the pike is the safety analysis. Right. Um, so the FDA said last month or, or a few weeks ago that they want to see, for any consideration of authorization, they want to see um, two months of median follow-up by study subjects. So half of the subjects should have um, been followed up for at least two months after the second dose of vaccines, uh, of, of, vac of this vaccine. And, and so therefore, uh, that's coming up in a few weeks, so that's what we are interested in. We want to see what is the impact on severe disease, not just all disease that is lab confirmed, and also how long does this protection last, um, and, and so on and so forth. Uh, another thing that we want to see is a correlate of protection. So that's the uh, antibody or any other immunological marker and a certain level of that that is associated with actual clinical real-life protection. and Vaccine trials can be an important tool to get at that. So, so that's another sort of scientific point we are looking for. The other thing here has been the just sheer level of mistrust about the speed upon which companies have been working on this vaccine. And the United States in particular is a, a country that has a lot of skeptics, what we call anti-vaxxers at this stage. Do you think that 90 percent figure helps convince some of those skeptics to say, OK, well, I may as well have it because the, the greater extent in, in most cases actually this works for people versus not? Or do you think that's still going to be a huge problem? I think only partially. So there are two, three things that will help convince people. The first thing is to ensure that the process is mainstream, rock solid, and is transparent. So the, they have been encouraging signs for the past three, four weeks that the uh, that FDA has, uh, you know, starting with the career folks, but all overall leadership as well, has given signals that they're going to follow the mainstream process. So that's the first thing. But that's necessary, but but not sufficient. Uh, look. Uh, you know, my understanding is that over $10 billion have been spent on Operation Warp Speed. And there have been zero real dollars spent or minimal effort on vaccine education and communication. 
so I'll, I'll give you an example. For tobacco, we had the Truth Campaign that is that was of national scope, and we're in the in the middle of a pandemic, and we assume that automatically one fine morning people will read the New York Times or watch CNN or CNN International, and they'll take vaccines. That's a naive way of thinking. So we need to have serious, concerted, evidence-based interventions. And the, and the evidence base is there now. And over the years, folks have developed evidence of how to communicate effectively around vaccines. So we need to bring our A game, not just to vaccine development, but to vaccine communication as well. Yeah, I hope Biden's transition team and their task force are listening to this because education is everything. Very quickly, let's talk about supply chains. How concerned are you about the distribution, particularly for this vaccine in particular, the mRNA, the messenger RNA? Cool conditions, really cold conditions are required. No, this is a massive logistical effort. Yeah. And some of us have been calling for a national plan for months. There are sort of, um, you know, versions of a plan now, uh, especially led by the CDC, uh, that that goes into these logistical issues. But it will be a logistical challenge. But it's not an unsurmountable logistical challenge. That while this overall storage is there, uh, it's minus 70, minus 80, the vaccine for deployment can usually, for these kinds of vaccines, can survive beyond that for a few days. So, so it's not that you have to bring everyone to a facility where there's minus 70 freezer, you can have sort of effective, smart strategies there. But at the end of the day, we have never, we have never vaccinated um, people in the numbers that we will need to vaccinate them for, for us to resume normal life. So, you know, this is a good news, uh, but, the, we, this is the, but this is just a start. Um, and, and the licensure or approval, otherwise approval of or authorization of a vaccine will be the beginning of the end. It will certainly not be the end of our efforts. Yes, plenty of challenges ahead, but still a great day for science and uh, a great day for humanity. Dr. Saad Omar, great to have your perspective and your wisdom here, the director of Yale Institute for Global Health.